Uh, one of the things you know about me, if you've been at this church for a while, I am not a handyman. Um, it's not a skill set that I have. Uh, one of the main reasons for that is because I had a father who never taught me how to fix anything. Um, so when I have issues at the house, what I end up doing most of the time at the house is I just try to fix things the best I can um, to get them by because one of the reasons is I'm cheap and I don't like to hire a professional to come in because they charge you money just to come to your house and that kind of ticks me off that they charge me like $65 to step in my house and like they'll be like a five minute problem and fix it and be out and charge me 65 bucks and I'm cheap so I just don't do it. So I try to fix things the best I can on my own. Uh, so for instance, my furnace at the house for the past two years has been held together, and this is gosh honest truth, uh, by a roll of tape with a baseball in the middle of it, and then I wedged it against the wall against the blower of my furnace. So what happened is the blower of my furnace has like four brackets on it, and it's super old when we bought the house, and two of the brackets have snapped off. And so I had like a, a guy come in like two years ago. He's like, we're going to have to replace the whole thing. I was like, no, we don't. We can figure it out a different way. Um, so I found a, a thing of tape, baseball, and then I wedged it where it kept the brackets from rubbing where the fan rubbed. So you can still hear it like scraping all the time, but it ran for two years. Um, then it finally broke like two weeks ago, and I couldn't get it by anymore, and I had to call the professionals in, and that's why I don't like calling them in because now I'm like $9,000 poorer than I used to be. Uh, so, but now I have a new AC and a new furnace and all that. Uh, but it got by for two years. Another thing I've done for about the last year, my uh, water heater, my mom's like sitting there like, don't tell this. Okay, my water heater sprung a leak like a year ago and I fixed it with duct tape. Um, and then the same day my uh, furnace started to go out here is the same day that leak started again. So then I spent literally about what, six hours on them one night trying to stop the water here and get the AC running. And then I kept putting more and more duct tape. And then I went out and I got like that putty stuff that you mix the two different types together and it turns into like concrete that I use for my pool. And I put it on that pipe trying to fix it. And that didn't fix it. And I couldn't get to stop. And I didn't know what I was doing. So water's pouring everywhere. And for like six hours, I'm trying to get this thing. So eventually I turned the power or the water off to get it to stop leaking. Um, and then I tried to fix it up and it wasn't leaking and none of that worked. And then I went online and I actually watched a professional and he told me like how to do it. And I figured out what the parts were and I actually fixed it. And at least for the moment, it's working without leaking right now, okay? All right, here's another one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, now here's the other one. My washer at the house for about the last eight to 10 weeks started leaking water out the front of it. So every time you did a load of laundry, water is coming out the front. Not a ton, but enough. So instead of calling someone to come fix it because that would cost money, I decided to try to fix it like a week ago. And so I tipped over the whole washer. I took parts and everything and I was fixing it. And then I put it back up. And then the first load literally flooded the entire floor. And Autumn happened to come home right when that happened. And I told her, don't look at the water on the floor. Just go in, I've got this under control. And I flooded the entire laundry room and now it bubbled up some of the wood right into the kitchen area. My mom's still not happy with me right now. All right, so anyways, I did that, but Last week I tried to fix it again and I think I have it fixed for the moment and it's not leaking water and it's running right now, but I have a warp in my floor and I flooded the room. Uh, the last one, and this is my greatest fix I ever did, is I had a green Mustang when I first moved here and the pipe that goes from when you put the gas in to your tank, there's a pipe inside the car right there, it started to rust out. And so it's putting gas in it, it started leaking like gas out when I'm pumping gas into it. So I got duct tape out and I was like, ah, I can fix this. So I duct taped where it was leaking and that worked. And then a few weeks later, it was leaking again, so I duct taped more. And so over a three year process, I duct taped this entire uh, pipe from where you put the gas in to the gas tank. Um, and after three years, there was no pipe left because it all rusted and it was just, it was, um, uh, just duct tape. And that lasted for a while until it didn't. And then I had to go get a fix. So uh, I had that one, that was probably my best thing I've ever done. Now, here's the point that I tell you all this. Um, I try to fix things randomly all the time just because I don't have the knowledge to actually navigate these issues correctly. So I just do the best that I can. What this usually does, it kind of temporarily delays having to call in professionals that come in and actually fix the real problem. And then they're usually fixing up the problems I've caused with my temporary fixes, okay? And that's usually what it does. It just kind of gives me a delay to some of those things. The reason I tell you this again is this. A lot of people handle their problems 
the way I handle my, uh, my household problems. Uh, we handle them similar, meaning this. Um, we really don't know what we're doing in life. Um, no one has really taught us how to do it successfully. We don't want to ask others who might have more advice or be professionals at it and be like, I really know how to handle these things. And so we kind of just walk through life doing the best we can to figure things out as we go. And usually what we get is kind of a mixed bag of results. So sometimes we actually get some temporary solutions. Sometimes we get some successes. We also experience a lot of failures too with how we navigate through life and the decisions we make. And a lot of times even this, the things that we get solutions for that are temporary, usually all they are is they're temporary band-aids and we still face the negative consequences and the pain that go along with them. We just kind of delayed it a little further and pushed it down the road. And then what happens is we start to look back on our lives and we start to see all the regrets that we had that maybe if we had chosen differently, we could have had different results in our life. And we get to the point in our lives where we kind of go, my past is just, it is what it is. Uh, the things that have been done have been done and things are just what they are now and I'm just kind of stuck where I am. And usually at that point, we just continue forward doing things the way we've always done it, trying to just make the best out of what we can and doing things the best that we know how, but having actually no expertise in how to live this thing called life, okay? Now that brings us to today's focus. Um, today's focus is this. There are three stages in our lives. Um, and you'll notice on the graphic here, very simple. You have your birth, you have the in-between stuff, and you have your death, okay? That makes up all of our lives. And the thing about it is this, our birth and our death, these are easy things, okay? These are easy because they just happen to us. There's nothing we can do to prevent them or do anything about it. You have your birth and your death. Those are kind of out of your hand. Uh, they're out of your control. But then there's this part called all the stuff in between, those two things. This is the area that we actually are in charge of. This is an area we actually can affect and we have the ability to uh, change how those things go on, how those events happen, the decisions we make in those moments is all that in-between stuff. Knowing that, we have a couple of options of how we're gonna move forward through that part of life, okay? And here are your options. Number one, you can do this. You can kind of just navigate it in the dark, uh, doing the best that you can with very limited knowledge of how to handle it, hoping for the best, and then knowing deep down inside, you really don't know what you're doing, okay? And you're just taking a shot in the dark, hoping stuff turns out well, when you really don't know how to get good results. The other option is this. You can go seek out an expert on life, get some advice from them, so you better understand how to navigate this thing in between our birth and our death, how we navigate that. And you can get some expert advice. Now. Um, you are free as an individual to choose either option. You can do it in the dark, um, trying to figure out best you can, or you can go to an expert. You have that choice to do how, uh, which one you want. But the smart thing would be this, is to go hire the expert, okay? That would be the smart thing because messing our lives up has a lot more consequences than messing up our washer or our furnace or our water heater at the house, okay? There's much greater consequences the mess in our lives up because we won't call in the experts to go, how do you do it, okay? So here's my first claim today, it's this. My first claim is there is an expert on how to best live your life. Um, that there is somebody that can tell us how to best live our life. Um, that expert is God. Um, and the reason I tell you that is this, it's pretty obvious. If you have the creator who created everything that we know he would obviously know what is the best way to make decisions in your life that would get you the best results as well. If he truly cares for you, he would go, hey, here are the situations you'll face, here's some of the different things you're gonna come across in your life, and here's how I would tell you to navigate these things, how to handle these things, the decisions to make, and how to do this stuff to get the best results and to avoid the most consequences and the most pain in this life. Um, that's what you would get. You would have a God who could tell you, this is best, this is what's gonna get you in trouble, this is what's gonna get you good results, okay? Um, my claim is this, luckily, there is a God who did give us that information. Um, and he gave us that information in what we call the Bible and through a biblical text, that he showed us kind of an owner's manual on life, and he goes, people, here it is. 
If you would follow this, you can get better results. If you would follow this, you can navigate life not in darkness and not just blind and hoping for the best, but you can actually know the things I'm doing lead to these types of results because I'm the owner, I created you, I created everything else and I can tell you how to navigate it, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, I've just got six uh, scriptures from the biblical text I wanna walk you through where God makes several claims about the biblical text, about the Bible, about the words in the Bible. And he gives us some claims that he says, these are results if you listen to these words, if you follow the stuff. Uh, here are the six. The first one comes from Joshua, uh, chapter 1, verse 8, and these will be up on the screen as well. It says this, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Okay? So God is telling Joshua and these people called the Israelites, he's going, hey guys, if you want to find success, if you want to prosper, follow my instructions. I've given you these books. Um, I want you to follow these things. And if you follow them, things will turn out well for you. Why? Because I'm God and I know how to do this thing. I'm your designer. I know what works best. Just follow my instruction book. Okay? Psalms 119, 105, it reads this. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. What that means is simply this. God's telling you, if you would read his word, if you would study his word, he's giving you the ability where you don't have to walk in darkness everywhere. It's going, I can light your path. And what he means by light your path is, if you're not following God's word and you're on your own, you have no clue what the next step is. You have no clue how the next step might turn out or even what the best choice is in that next step. And he's going, I'll light your path. I'll give you the ability to at least see a little bit forward so you can trust that if you do these things, you'll get this result. If you do this, you'll get this result. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a glimpse where you're not walking in the dark and stumbling over everything because I'm going to let you see some of it and go, hey, this is coming up. You're going to deal with this, and this is how you handle it when you get there so it does not wreck your life, so it does not destroy your life. And he's going, I will be a lamp to your feet. I will be a light onto your path. Okay? Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it reads this. All scripture is inspired by God, and it is useful to teach us what is true, make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong, and it teaches us what to do, uh, teaches us uh, to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Here's the next thing he promises us, the claim of the Bible. If you would study his word, he would bring clarity to what is good and what is bad in your life. Not just the decisions to make, but also the things that you're involved in. He would help you be able to identify the things and go, this is not healthy for you, and this is. This is bad for you, and if you would include this in your life, this would be good for you. And he says, I will help you discover those things. Because if you don't have the Word of God, if you're not getting it from the instruction manual of God himself, here's what you end up with. You end up with a bunch of people's different opinions including your own. And then you have to go, who do I trust that can tell me I know what they're telling me is good and bad, and how do they know what is defined as good and what is bad and what is right and what is wrong? And you're limited literally from other fallible humans who are similar to you who make mistakes all the time, and you're going, I have to trust their word to figure that out. And God's claim is this. You don't have to waste your time trusting all the different people with all their different opinions. I'm God. I'm going to tell you so you know and you don't have to doubt it. Here's right, here's wrong. And if you read it, I will even expose the stuff in your life that you might not even see. And I will show you this isn't good, this is. Okay, so he talks about that's the value of the biblical text. Uh, James 1, 25, it says this. Uh, but if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and you don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. So the next claim is this. If you follow God's words, it'll set you free. Okay? Set you free from what? Well, it'll set you free from all the garbage of the world, trying to figure stuff out and the stress that comes with that. It'll set you free from all the potential pitfalls you're going to fall into if you don't know where you're going. And it's going, I will set you free so you know that the things that you are doing now, because I'm doing what God's asked me to do, I know the results that come from it, both now and forever. And so it sets me free to just 
let that stress go and go, I'm just following God's path because I know God is right and I know he's my designer and he knows what's best. So there's freedom that's brought by following God's word. And it says also that God will bless you, uh, that God's hand of blessing will be on you. It doesn't mean you'll be rich. It doesn't mean everything is going to be wonderful and great. It just means that God will bless you. It means inside um, you, you'll have a joy. Um, you'll have a different understanding of how you view everything in this world based on that um, in inside joy that God gives you. It just redefines how you see everything, okay? Two more, John 3, 16 and 17. Even if you haven't been in church much, you know this one. It says, for this is how God loved the world. Uh, he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him, okay? So the next thing we see in the scriptures is this. It lets you know how God saved you. Um, that yes, you are going to mess your life up. You're going to do things that God does not want you to do, but God's offered you a path back to himself, and he's let you know how he did it through his son, Jesus Christ. And he didn't come here to send Jesus to judge you and beat you up and tell you everything you've done is, is wrong. He brought him here to let you know you can be saved. That's what he brought to, uh, Jesus here for. The last one, Colossians, chapter 1, 19 through 22. It's kind of a long section, but just bear with me and read it here as we go. It says, For God in all of his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by the evil thoughts, by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. The beauty of this scripture is this. Um, what we see in its biblical text is God loved you so much, okay, that he knew you were going to blow everything up. He knew that you were going to choose your own way. He knew that you were going to reject him at times in your life, and he went, I've got to find a way to save him. And so he came down here and Jesus gave his life for us to reconcile us to him. And the, the, what we get from that is this, as it says at the end, and now we are holy and blameless as we stand before God without a single fault. Now the question is, how is that possible? Um, because even if you are a Christian in here and you are a follower of Jesus Christ, we all look at our lives and none of us define ourselves as holy and blameless and without a single fault, Right? We all still know we have issues. We all still know we have sins. We all still do stuff that we know God tells us not to do, and we choose our own ways. We're all very aware of that. So what does he mean here when he says, and you are holy and blameless, and you stand before him without a single fault, that when you get to your death, and you stand before the count for your life, how is it possible you've done nothing wrong in his eyes? And it's through Christ. Okay? That's why we have the crosses on the wall. Why? Because it's the greatest... Um, illustration of love we can ever experience in our life. That God came and it allowed himself to be crucified for our sins, to be punished for what we did. What that gains us is this. When we stand before God someday, okay, Jesus will say everything that you did that was wrong, I did it. I did it. You're not guilty of it. I did those things. And he will say, and you get to claim my life, and his life was perfect. It was blameless. It was holy. It was out of a single fault. And he goes, you can claim my life before God, and I will claim yours. That's why that scripture makes sense. That is what we are told in the Bible. So here's the thing. The Bible basically offers us two um, different things from the creator. Um, the first thing the Bible offers us is this, an owner's manual on how to live life. That's the first thing. The second thing is it offers us a redemption story to let us know that our past doesn't have to define our future. That's what we get from the Bible. An owner's manual and our past doesn't have to define our future. Uh, Jesus says in John chapter 8, he says, I am the light of the world. If you will follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. He also says in John 10.10, 10, he says this. He says, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Okay. Let me go back to my illustrations of the beginning of my handyman. 
real quick, I love this last scripture. It says, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. Your enemy that we know from biblical text is Satan. Okay? His goal here that we see is to steal, kill, and destroy your life. One of the greatest ways he does that is don't talk to the expert. Go figure things out on your own. You figure out a solution to all of your problems. Don't worry about what the expert would tell you. And through that, what you do is you basically end up stealing your life, killing your life, and destroying your life because you're just randomly trying to figure it out on your own, and he's really happy with that because he gets the results he's hoping. Jesus, on the other hand, says this. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Um, I'm here to give you a rich and satisfying life so you can navigate life, you can avoid these uh, pitfalls, and you can find true joy, true satisfaction, true purpose in the things you do in this life. My question for you as I close today is this. How have you been living your life? Are you moving forward blind, just doing the best you can, um, attempting uh, to just figure things out in the darkness? Or are you attempting to follow the wisdom and the principles that are shared with us in the biblical text that God has provided for us? Uh, depending on how you choose that will have a substantial impact on the life that you experience moving forward from this moment. Uh, you can choose to do it blind, or you can choose to do it with a lamp given to you by your creator that says, here is a roadmap, here's an owner's manual, and if you follow this, I'll get you through it. Uh, the choice is yours. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, 